Hi everyone, my name is Chris Borales. I'm on the product marketing team here at Gigamon where I focus on our security solutions. So let's take a little bit of a look at a ransomware attack. The attacker needs to gain access to the network. They can do that through a phishing campaign. Maybe they do it through initial access brokers. Any way they get in, what they're doing is they're bypassing your perimeter defenses. So they're bypassing things like next-gen firewalls, IPS, IDS systems, antivirus. These perimeter defenses are becoming less effective because attackers are getting better at bypassing them. So once they get initial access, maybe they've gained user access to one of the machines on your network. What do they do from there? They need to maintain persistence. Maintaining persistence really involves downloading and installing the tools that they are gonna to use to operationalize their attack activity. They might do that by downloading tools from a, we call it a command and control server or C2 server that's out here on the web. Once they've downloaded those tools and they can maintain persistence on the network, this is when they move laterally. This means that they are proliferating in the network. They are trying to find where the most sensitive data is, and they're going to access as many machines or endpoints or devices that they possibly can. So lateral movement, maybe they've gotten access to this machine, now they need to move to this one. Or maybe, they, maybe you have medical devices on your network. These, these medical devices, these IoT devices, these OT devices, can't often have endpoint agents installed on them, so you're effectively, you can't manage these, end, these particular devices. Great way for attackers to move laterally and sort of proliferate throughout the network. Maybe they're in BYOD devices, maybe these are mobile devices. Maybe they're in devices like a printer, an IoT device. These are ways that they are proliferating across your network that they are spreading. Now, once they've moved laterally, now they need to escalate their privileges. They probably have user access to these devices on the network. Now they need to get administrative access because they know the most valuable data is really in the infrastructure. It's on things like these client servers. Maybe there's an active directory server that they have access to. Maybe an application server that might be misconfigured or a backup server. So once they've escalated their privileges, Now they have the data that they need in order to carry out exfiltration and extortion. So what they're gonna do, once they've gotten the data, they're gonna exfiltrate that data. They're gonna steal it, and it's gonna leave your network. This is when the ransomware proliferates, and this is when the extortion attempts roll out. So this is when you're gonna see your machines locked down. You're gonna see the ransomware messages here. Maybe they'll get deployed on these medical devices as well. It's not unheard of that all of the devices on the network are locked down during these ransomware attacks. They know they have you in your most sensitive, or you, know, you are the most vulnerable at this point. So this is when they leverage the extortion attempts. But they're also, now that they've compromised the backup server, they've maybe stolen some sensitive intellectual property, they know that they have a lot of leverage on you, and this is when they can extort you for the maximum amount. The primary extortion attempt looks like just the sort of standard ransomware that I think a lot of us have seen, where you'll see that ransom the demand on, you know, on the end user machines, where they'll say, you know, please pay us three Bitcoin or whatever the, whatever the extortion amount is. But what's happening lately is that they are now demanding double and triple extortion. That means that because they've stolen sensitive information from you, they will, also, they will also request additional funds in order to prevent the release of that information. So that is the double extortion. For triple extortion, they might try to impact your customers. They will go after your customers, extort them if there is sensitive information about them. Organizations need visibility across this entire attack lifecycle. This is where the Gigamon Deep Observability Pipeline comes into play. It provides visibility across the entire attack lifecycle to where you have full east-west visibility across any of your organization's infrastructure, whether or not it's cloud, on-premises, multi-cloud. The Deep Observability Pipeline is there 
to enable your security and network teams to get this visibility that is so fundamental to a mature security posture. For more information, check out the rest of our Lightboard video series or gigamon.com. Thanks for watching.